Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I wanted to talk about Card Hog. And Card Hog is a small but fun dungeon crawler roguelite that recently came out in early access, and it actually kind of reminds me of a puzzle game called 2048. But before we get into this review, I do want to let you guys know that the developers of Card Hog are helping support this channel by sponsoring today's video. I never let that influence my reviews, I just like staying super transparent with you all. But either way, let's just jump into the review. So Card Hog was originally a game that I kind of passed over at first because I didn't think the gameplay looked very fun. But after playing it for a while, it is actually surprisingly addictive. Uh, in it, you play as a pig in kind of like a grid-based system surrounded by monsters and weapons and traps and items, and every turn you actually move in a single direction, very similar to, like I said earlier, the puzzle game 2048. So if you move into an enemy and you don't have a weapon, you take damage equal to how much health they had left, but if you have a weapon and you move on to an enemy, you actually deal damage equal to the weapon durability you have left on your weapon. If you move on to health potions, you regain some health. If you move on to gold, you get gold that you can spend in these shops that uh, appear randomly and you can also use it to unlock new classes. Uh, if you move on to scrap, you gain scrap that you can spend at blacksmiths that appear randomly and upgrade your weapons for the run. Uh, there's also traps that you can only safely walk on every other turn, so pretty much like every time you move, spikes come either you know out of them or they retract back in and it kind of makes the timing of where you're moving really, really interesting. Uh, there's also caves that you can and hit and a bunch of things could pop out. It could be an enemy, it could be gold, it could be a health potion, it could be whatever. And so the longer you survive in this grid, you know, typical roguelite things will start to appear. You start to have people like shopkeepers and blacksmiths and friendly assassins that show up and you can interact with. Uh, you also have shrines that will show up that'll upgrade your health or your damage across all your weapons. Uh, and even just bosses show up. So when you kill some of the bosses, you know, all of them are pretty unique and have their own mechanics. And when you kill them, they'll drop like boss items that you can put into your deck. So if you kill like this, you know, slime king, it'll drop like a slime spiked weapon that's really, really good. Uh, and I believe even some special enemies will drop items or weapons that get put into your deck as well. And the enemies just start getting harder and harder and harder until you eventually die. So for the first main game mode, you mainly just try to see how long you can survive and how much of a high score you could get. The next main game mode is called Flame Escape, and it has the same type of gameplay, except instead of a set grid, you actually have to keep moving to the right as the leftmost spots on the grid keep catching on fire each turn. So you pretty much just try to see how far you can get in this game mode and how much you can escape. There's also something called the Laboratory, which are gameplay modes that are currently being tested. So at the time of this recording, there was only one in it, and it was called Dungeon Loops. And it was pretty much just similar to the first game mode, except after you kill a boss, you can kind of reset your run and bring one item with you, and the enemies get harder as well. So the progression in this game is pretty much just unlocking four different classes, and you do that by playing a little and getting enough gold saved up to buy them. Once you do, you unlock their starting items by getting a certain amount of kills with them and there's also some starting perks to unlock as well. The thing is though is it is not very hard to get all of the unlocks really quickly. I unlocked all of the classes and all of the perks within around an hour and a half and I do kind of wish that there was more to unlock or more things to work towards because once you get all of that you're mainly just playing the game for fun and don't get me wrong the game is fun on its own but I will say that progression in a roguelite is super super important. So maybe if they made more classes that were harder to unlock and made them have like potentially switchable starting items that you could unlock by doing harder things, that would be a really cool idea. Each of the different classes do play very differently from each other based on their starting items and they all have different feels which is really nice. You can also create custom classes by selecting all these starting items that you would want to start with and you can even change what you look like to any of the creatures in the game that you've discovered which is fun. There are also two different multiplayer modes, although they are only local play, but I guess that's fair. Uh, in one of them, you duel your opponent on separate grids, but in my experience, it took a really long time to actually kill the opponent if you were both actually good. Uh, and then there's another co-op mode where both of you are trying to escape that kind of fire conveyor belt thing, uh, which was kind of cool as well. There is also a work in progress workshop where you can create custom cards and decks, and I expect that this will become a lot better 
better and streamlined the longer the game is and I didn't really check it out too much. So the game is fun but I do have some feedback. The couple pieces of feedback I have are one, maybe explain a little better what each game mode does and maybe have a character deck selection screen separate or before each game mode because as of right now you have to actually go into that first main game mode to change classes even though it affects some of the other game modes. My second piece of feedback is that I think the progression should be changed and beefed up. I think there should be more things to unlock and it should take longer than around an hour to unlock everything. And obviously more content will be coming in this game, you know, in the forms of, you know, not only progression but game modes as well. It is an early access, but just when you are adding more things to unlock, it would be nice if it was actually, you know, going to take up some time to unlock so you didn't just unlock everything really fast and then just play the game to have fun, which the game is fun but you know having that progression to kind of motivate you for a longer period of time would be nice. And my third very nitpicky piece of feedback is that the game when full screen it seems like a little blurry and it's clearly meant for like a windowed mode so maybe if it was possible to make it look nicer when full screened you know I know that I'm not a game developer I know that is way easier said than done um, but you know that that could not hurt but Overall, Card Hog is a very small roguelite that I think you can get a couple hours of fun from, uh, which is completely fair because the game is only $4. So for $4, you get this surprisingly addictive grid-based system that has this dungeon-crawling roguelite mechanics uh, in it, and if you've played 2048 or puzzle games like it, uh, it kind of gives you a very satisfying and similar feel to that. Uh, you know, once you've played several times and get kind of good enough, you can kind of just go through the motions of the early game uh, and just do it really really satisfying because each of the turns are just moving up left down and right so you know once you're good enough you can go through that pretty pretty fast and it's really really satisfying the art style of the game is actually really, really charming. You know, it kind of has this hand-drawn cartoon style vibe to it. Uh, and all of the enemies and all the characters and, you know, items and things look really, really cute, honestly. Uh, the sound effects in the game are really, really satisfying. They get the job done. Uh, I think the game actually also just recently got a new soundtrack or at the very least got a couple new songs added. And, you know, the whole time I was jamming out to the music, so... Uh, you know, the art style is really, really good. It's unique enough. It doesn't just look like a Flash game or something like that. It has its own distinctive, you know, art style that is is really pleasing. Um, you know, I really love the kind of concept of having it be all, like individual cards and whatnot, um, you know, that make up the grid and, and everything. And it just, it's, it's a really satisfying game to look and listen to. In terms of it being an early access, I think the main things it needs is more content in the forms of game mode and progression you know just get a better progression system in there but the core gameplay is there so I think if you know it's a great game if you just want to play a couple of runs for fun while if you're like in a queue for a longer game if you're waiting for a League of Legends game or a Dota game or something uh, you know or your friends in a battle royale you know like if you died and they're still in the game I think this is a really fun game to play in between other games uh, or if you just need a break from a bigger game you're playing this is the game for you so uh, highly recommend recommended especially with the cheap price there um, but if you have played this game or just from if this is your first time seeing it just you know from watching gameplay I would love to know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below uh, you know I try to respond to every single one of you guys and if you enjoyed this video then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more content new videos come out once or twice each week just on a wide variety of games so subscribe to see more of them in the future also if you want even more of me uh, I have a podcast called Media Crash where we talk about just a wide variety of genres in the you know pop culture realm. So last episode, we actually talked about the crime genre. So if you can't get enough of me, uh, check that out. And if you guys are having a great day today, I hope you continue having a great day. If you guys aren't having a great day, I hope you guys start having a great day. But either way, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. See you guys next time.